Today, we're taking a look at Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash number one from Wildstorm Comics and Dynamite Entertainment, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Come Again TV, where all geek culture collides. And if you're new to the channel, make sure and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future episodes. This is the Comic Talk series, where we take a look at individual issues, remove the text, and dramatically read it back to you in our own words. At the end of each issue, we then give you our thoughts on it and let you know if we recommend buying a copy or not. Today, we're taking a look at Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, number one of six by Wildstorm Comics and Dynamite Entertainment from November of 2007. Created by Wes Craven, Victor Miller, and Sam Raimi. Written by James Kohorik and Jeff Katz. With art by Jason Craig. It's December 2005. It's been five years since Freddy Krueger tried to manipulate Jason Voorhees into bringing him back after the children of Springwood forgot about him. Five years since their epic battle which saw Jason eventually decapitate Freddy at Camp Crystal Lake. Five years since Will Rollins and Lori Campbell escaped that horrendous massacre. Crystal Lake has been renamed to Force Green in order to attempt to erase their terrifying history and the memory of two of their past residents. Pamela and Jason Voorhees, a mother who avenged her son's drowning by brutally murdering anyone who set foot in Camp Crystal Lake, and her son, Jason, a resurrected ghoul who watched his mother get beheaded and took upon her cause. The people of Forest Green have done their best to conceal their dark path, paved new roads, build lakeside condos, and even constructed a new Super Mega S Mark. Will and Lori are on their way back to where it happened. Lori keeps getting this feeling deep in her gut that Jason and Freddy aren't gone. Like they somehow managed to survive and she needs to go back to make sure. Will, on the other hand, sees it as tempting fate. To him, it's a bad idea. They survived after all and going back just feels wrong. But he loves her and he won't let her go alone. Huh. <laughs> What kind of freaking idiots keep going back to a cabin in the woods when they know a bunch of possessed horrors are waiting to swallow their souls, right? When they stop to have a look around, Lori finds blood on one of the trees, and when she turns around, Will is gone. There are footprints, someone else was there, and took Will away. She follows the track, stumbling up the hill of snow, and discovers a pool of blood in the doorway of one of the condos nearby. Upon entering, she sees him. Her love, her childhood sweetheart, the only other person to survive that night five years ago, was dead. He'd been gutted and hung from the upstairs balcony. Overcome with grief, she doesn't notice there, standing behind her, with a machete in hand, is Jason Voorhees, ready to add to his kill count and finish what was started five years earlier. He swings his blade down at her, but it catches on the wall, and she manages to evade him. But as she runs, Jason grabs a metal barb and launches it at her, catching her in the shoulder. She pulls it out and continues to run. She manages to get upstairs and vows that she's going to kill them once and for all. She'll make them both pay for killing her love. She stumbles to the attic where she finds a skill saw and cuts through Jason while at the same time dodging his advances. I actually felt sorry for you. What Freddy did to you, what those sadistic kids and irresponsible camp counselors did to you. But you just keep killing. You take and you take, and you take. When will it be enough, Jason? When, you son of a bitch? With that, she manages to knock him out the third floor window and down to the ground, but she's not done. Not by a long shot. She has to finish it before he can kill again. It was their destiny to survive. It was her destiny to survive. But you can only outrun the Reaper for so long. Because when she opens the door, there's Jason greeting her with a machete to the skull. One chop is all it took. Right down her face between her eyes. He's finished it. No loose ends. The last of the kids from the night five years ago are dead. But Freddy's still around. Back at Jason's house, his little ramshack in the woods, he keeps his trophies. And there, on a table next to his mother's head, he keeps the head of Freddy Krueger as a reminder. But Freddy didn't die. He just returned to the dream world. He's been waiting all this time to torture Jason even more. He's trapped in Jason's dreams. Jason's consciousness is transported into that world where he's reminded of how the children at camp called him freak. Reminded of how the counselors were too busy having sex to notice him drowning. He makes his way to a cabin where he hears moaning, more sex. But this time, it's Freddy going to town on Jason's mom. Jason, my baby boy, you need a daddy. 
he'll make sure no one picks on you anymore. You need to go back to our old house and find a very special book. It's buried deep in the cellar. Find the Necronomicon. Free Freddy from your mind prison and give yourself a second chance. We then come to a 1973 Oldsmobile Delta 88 Royal. Driving the car is the narrator of the story. It's been 16 years since Ash Williams fought the Army of Darkness. 16 years since the last time he saw that evil book, the Necronomicon Ex Mortis. The Book of the Dead, written in blood on pages made of human flesh, it can summon the dead, grant limitless power, and command demons from hell. It can rid Jason of Freddy once and for all, and make Jason into a real boy. It's what's allowed Jason's soul to move between bodies in the film Jason Goes to Hell, and what allows Jason to continuously return from the grave. Ash has been called to the new Forest Green S Mark in order to give his retail expertise as a senior housewares domestic engineer from Detroit to a team of teenage slacker employees who want nothing more than to goof around and make some easy cash for the holidays. Ash is the chosen one. Unlike Will Rollins and Lori Campbell, Ash didn't just survive once or even twice. Ash has survived a barrage of deadites who attacked his cabin after he and his friends ignorantly read from the Book of the Dead. He survived all of his friends and even his sister being possessed by the deadites and had to kill them all. Ash survived a second attack by the deadites and even managed to fight off his own possessed hand. The deadites nearly had him. But in one desperate act to survive, Ash removed his dead-eyed infested right hand and replaced it with a gas-powered chainsaw and took up a second weapon, which he dubbed his Boomstick. He survived being sucked into a vortex created by the book which launched him back in time to 1300 AD Europe. He survived doing battle with an evil version of himself and an invasion of dead-eyed skeletons. He even somehow managed to make his way back to present day. He is the chosen one no one else. But it wasn't always this way. He had a real life once, but that was a long time ago, in an S-Mart far, far away. He only has two things that matter to him now. Cutting Deadite, the get in his way down, to itty bitty burial bites, and destroying that damn book. What'd you guys think of this issue? Personally, I enjoyed it. I liked how they connected Freddy vs. Jason to Jason Goes to Hell and the Evil Dead films. I'm not entirely sure why they felt it necessary to open with Will and Lori returning to Crystal Lake. They could have just as easily made it where Jason tracked them down like a bloodthirsty canine like in Friday the 13th Part 2 or even Jason Takes Manhattan. Why did they feel it necessary to bring the two back to Crystal Lake? One other thing I wish the creative team had done is spend a little bit more time building up to Ash's introduction. They could have had a few panels focus on the Delta 88 driving down the road before showing the inside of the car. They could have shown Will and Lori past the Delta on the road or even shown the Delta driving past the store with the Jason graffiti on it, just in the opposite direction, just after Will and Lori. They could have broken away from the scene just after Lori discovers Will's footprints and the struggle and show another panel of the Delta driving down the snowy road and then cut back to Lori stumbling up the hill. They could have cut back to the Delta just after the panel where Lori begins running up the stairs and then cut back to the very next panel. They could have added a panel of the Delta going down the snowy road directly between Lori reaching the top of the stairs and Jason reaching her while she has a skill saw behind her back. Comic books should be treated as mini movies, especially if they're a mini series, which was originally meant to be a film. Build up to the hero and then reveal him in the final panel. Don't tell a complete story and then introduce him in the last few pages. That's just lazy. They had another chance to focus on the car in another panel just after Jason fell out the window, which would have helped the timing and building the suspense, but instead they jumped right into one panel of Lori rushing down the stairs, one panel of Lori opening the door, and one panel of Jason attacking her as she opens the door. Then, in between the panel where Freddy's face appears in the sign on the door and the next page which focuses on the forest green S-Mart, we could have seen another panel of the Delta. This issue should have really been treated like the introduction of Doomsday in the Death of Superman storyline. But instead of building up to the ultimate threat for the hero, build up to the hero who would face the ultimate threat. Once they did that, they could have had a few pages that were dedicated only to Jason and Freddy in the dream world. And then, right after the panel showing the Necronomicon, show the front view of the Delta pulling into the parking lot. Follow that up with a rear shot of the Delta pulling into a parking space and finish it off with a shot inside the car of Ash Williams. And then in the very final shot, as Ash walks through the parking lot, show Jason watching from the tree. 
Organizing issue number one like that would help build the suspense a lot more and help to introduce Ash and the importance of his car. Because in every Sam Raimi film, the Delta isn't just a car, it's a character in the film as well. The Delta 88 is just as important to the story as Ash or his chainsaw or his boomstick. Even though I had my problems how issue number one was pieced together, I will say that overall, it wasn't a bad read. They could have made a few changes to it before it went to print, and I feel that had Sam Raimi had a hand in developing the story he would have probably pieced it together just as i stated make it just as much an evil dead story as a freddy vs jason story from the beginning but that's only my thought let me know yours in the comments below until next time when we take a look at freddy vs jason vs ash number two i'm shannon for comic tv where all geek culture collides take care